they seem to, to be in uh, such a major. Hello and welcome to the To Be More podcast. I'm Erica Kane. Today's guest, I'm super excited to have here, Franchon Cruz Desern is the current undisputed super middleweight world boxing champion. She won the WBA and IBF female super middleweight titles from Ellen Seyaderos on April 30th, 2022, and she held the WBC female title since June 2020 and previously in 2018. As of May of last year, she is ranked as the world's best active female super middleweight by The Ring Magazine and Box Rec. And right now she's gearing up for the undisputed super middleweight championship bout against British boxer Savannah Marshall in Manchester, England. It's coming up July 1st at AO Arena. But there is so much more to Franchon or the heavy hitting diva, as her fans affectionately call her. The HH diva is here. And you may not know everything about her, but we're about to find out today. So we're glad to have her. Welcome. Thank you. I love that. I need to have you introduce me all the time. Okay. <laughs> Listen, I am just so excited to have you here because you have a major bout coming up, but you've been doing major things for so long, representing Baltimore all around the world in several different countries. Yes. So we wanted to make sure that you are celebrated here on your home base, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, yes. We had to show you love. Now, July 1st, coming up, Manchester, England, Savannah Marshall. Now, you know, of course, they, they call her the silent assassin. She's got multiple knockouts. And she's rated number two <laughs> by the ring and box rec, but you're rated number one. Yes. So how have you been? I know the preparation has been intense for this bout. Yes. Well, I'm a visual person. I actually pulled up to the UK for her last fight. Okay. Where she fought uh, another great boxer, Clarissa Shields. Yes. So I was ringside. After that fight, I pulled up and said, hey, I'll give you a shot. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And now it's manifested to this um, this headlining fight, July 1st. And we actually were supposed to be the co-main event. Mm -hmm. But as the universe has it, we're top bill which is a great platform yes. for, for women's boxing. Yes. And just me, that's history for me, being a girl that started here in Baltimore, headlining in the United Kingdom. Like, that's crazy. It's crazy that you say you pulled up to a fight. You said that like you were just rolling around the corner, but yeah. you pulled, you had to pull up yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and see what was going on. So what has the preparation been like for you besides staying hydrated and drinking plenty of water? Yes. But you've also been on the road. You've yes. been back and forth. You're here in Baltimore. Now you're going to be on a plane shortly yes. uh, headed to Manchester, England. So in the midst of this moving around and traveling, what has the preparation been like for you? But how does the HH Diva get ready? Yeah, so it's it's, it's growth. Like, I'm a grassroots boxer. I started in, in, in the urban neighborhood gym, um, but now as I established myself as a world champion, I'm able to move around. So um, my home base for training is down in D.C. at the Headbangers Gym. Okay. But my husband and I opted to go to Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and train. Um, my manager, Peter Kahn, is down there. That's like a second home for me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like to be one with nature and just the sunshine. That that sunshine makes me feel like superwoman. Yeah. So being there, um, they have a rich culture in boxing and just, you know, working hard every day. I can get up at 11 o'clock at night and go running because the weather is so phenomenal. And uh, we just been working. I, I recently got back. I have a super farmer's tan. Like, if I take my jacket, it's, <laughs> it's like light skin up here. Okay. Michael Jackson down here. But um, uh, I feel good mentally, physically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually. No camp, no anything worth having. You're going to go through adversity. And I feel like I'm, I'm acing these tests that's been put in front of me. Uh, I have, like, my husband who has complete faith in me and, and confidence and belief. And I'm just going over here to do what I do. I'm always used to being an underdog. Even though I'm a top dog, I keep that underdog mentality. And I'm a world champion, so I, I feel comfortable any place in the world, even going into her backyard. And I'm just going to let her know why they call me the heavy hit diva. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, support is a great thing. You mentioned your husband, Glenn Desern Jr. Yes. And he's also a boxer. Yes. Great boxer. So how is it being married, a boxer being married to a boxer? You would be surprised. Like the, the icing on the cake is he understands the lifestyle. Boxing is a lonely, sacrificing, 
uh, mentally tiring, emotional. Uh, it's a lot. Being mm-hmm. a boxer, th- fighting in the ring is the easy part. It's the stuff on the outside of the ring. But having someone like him that understands we can push and continue to push. We've been on this journey over a decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we got the pictures and the facts to prove it. But outside of boxing, we're just normal. Like, we have a relationship as, of course, husband and wife, brother and sister, mother, father, and we have two cats. So we're not in the gym. <laughs> we're like at home right. with the cats and, and sewing and doing like regular people stuff. Now, when you mention adversity that you face outside of the ring, that gets hard. What specifically, what, what are some of those things that you deal with outside of the ring? Well, um, one thing I'm very proud of for this fight um, is that I'm a co-promoter. So it's not just me showing up on the fight and just being a part of it's it. It's a lot of work. Yeah, my 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 logo, my my company is on the banners. Um, this is a big step and a big accomplishment for me because ownership is everything. Mm-hmm. And I like to thank my uh, you know, my manager Peter Kahn for putting me in a position. Uh, but the business side, you have to deal with life. Like I still have responsibilities. Yeah, I have a a, a staff that I work with, and they have things. So when things aren't going the way I thought or wanted to go, I have to adjust. Um, Of course, putting your body through hell and high water, you know, you get, feel like you get injured a little bit, you get fatigued. It's just, it's just a lot. Yeah. And then you have to have that struggle within your mind because, you know, you have to have balance of anything. Doubt, faith and self-belief wouldn't exist without doubt. Absolutely. So you have to always fight to make sure that doubt is this big and that self-belief is that big. The mental is so important. Yeah. So I just, I felt good being in Florida where I'm surrounded by animals. I feel like, and I'm not trying to get all deep, but everything is like, I'm vibrating really high. Yeah. It's important. Yeah. So a lot of the things I would think, or I'd be speaking and it'll come up, like I'll be thinking about somebody, they come up or I want to do something and it comes up. So I'm like, okay, I'm getting there. I'm strong. Yeah. And I'm ready. Manifesting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm, I'm lit right now. Okay. I'm lit. (laughs) (laughs) And I would imagine too, with you, your schedule, you're traveling, your husband has his own career, his schedule traveling. Do you guys travel together a lot? Do you train together a lot? Yeah. He's my training partner. He's actually going to be like uh the the chief in my corner like mm-hmm. he's going to be running the show along with some other talented coaches um and I'm blessed that we can be on this journey together it's it switches like when he's fighting I got my management hat on I got my promotion hat and everything right. and it's all about him and when I'm fighting he does the same for me but he's my best training partner and uh he he always wants the best out of me. Even when I give all I got, he's like, No, it's a little bit more. So right. I mean, shoot, I can't ask for a better person than that. Right. And so Glenn, your husband, is he from Baltimore? Yeah, West Side certified. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because you are originally Virginia Beach. Yeah. Seven seven five seven. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. about the Chesapeake. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um so I guess that was uh we should thank your husband for the Baltimore connection. And how did that how did that come about? Yeah, so I actually um I moved here, and I grew up here. I'll say Virginia uh, ra- made me. Baltimore definitely raised me. VA bred or, or a VA born and Baltimore bred. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I had I found everything. I found myself. Um, I had to survive. It was just me and my mom, and she, you know she transitioned in 2016. So I, it was just me and her. I knew nobody. Mm-hmm. I, I had a, my godfather. He said in my life, Milroy. That was like my first friend and. It was a lot. I, I became a, a wife. I've became a college graduate. Mm-hmm. I became an undisputed champion. I became a person that that inspires the community. Like here in Baltimore, you know, we get such a bad rap, but it, it I really thugged it out from the bottom here. And um, yep. And my husband, when I got with him, he just was an angel. Um, I, Throughout, what's crazy, my, my boxing career coincides with my mom's health issues. Mm. She had a uh, stage four renal cancer. Okay. And when she, she actually got robbed in front of her home, I was, and I came home from the gym late. And in Baltimore. Got, yeah, in Baltimore, in front of her house, and it caused internal bleeding. Ugh. And then from that, it went into the kidney issues because she worked so hard. She would never let me know, like, she was suffering from things because right. she's a mom and she's grinding. But it triggered everything. And uh, I 
I actually had went on American Idol prior to that. So we were watching my debut on American Idol from a hospital bed. And then three months later, I went onto the national scene with boxing. So my motto has always been, she fights to live, I fight to win. Wow. And from then on, we've been fighting. She beat cancer twice and scares. And then Glenn came. It's just been a whole journey. And to be able to be in this position that I'm in now, I'm very, very, very grateful. And I'm very motivated. And I just want people to know, like, don't let things you go through define you in a negative way. Mm-hmm. Let it empower you. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm trying to do right now. So you mentioned American Idol. We're, we're going to get to that in a minute <laughs> because the talent is multifaceted. So yes. we're, we're going to talk about that. But who brought boxing to your doorstep? Well, music, music's my first love. I knew I was going to be a famous singer. Okay. And so when did you start singing? When I was nine, and I started writing songs when I was 12. Okay. And I was horrible back then. My mom used to tell me, <laughs> shut up. Like, she used to tell me, shut up. And then, like, one day I sung Mama on Mother's Day by Voice to Men, and she cried. And she was like, oh. So I was like, okay, I'm here. I'm All here. right. She wasn't just emotional because it was a nah, sentimental she was thing. Like, okay. I, and then I had the makeshift studio. You know, back in the day, you had one cassette player, one cassette player. You right. like, yeah, yeah. So I had okay. all of that. And um, <laughs> I was in the studio in Baltimore, and two of my guy friends were like, hey, you could lose weight five pounds in one day with boxing. I was like, for real? So they took me to the gym, and <laughs> my first day I sparred. I so that's how they got you in? Mm-hmm. I mean, I could fight. I was a street fighter in Virginia, Baltimore. I earned my stripes. Okay, so they already knew. It was already a reputation. Yeah, I okay. could fight a little bit. You know, okay. I had to fight. Right. And then I went to the gym, and I ended up sparring the first day this guy named James Barry, and he he was a beast in boxing. And we're friends to this day. Um, he's actually in a different kind of fight for his freedom. Okay. So that's what I carry in my heart also. But okay. me and him sparred so hard, they called us Ike and Tina because we were going You were going at it. <laughs> we were going at it. And uh after it was all done, had a little busted lip and the coach was like, Huh, we might got something here. Wow. So this sounds like a movie. It's the truth. <laughs> My life has always kind of been a divine order. Like, I don't know where I'm going, but I'm there. <laughs> okay, so you're singing already. Someone yes. has bought boxing to you. So now you're you, you're sparring. Yes. People are say, saying that you're good. Yeah. So you're starting to fall in love with it a little bit? Or how, how are you feeling about it? Is it becoming a passion at this point? Yeah, well, boxing really um, taught me so much because being a transplant from a different place Mm -hmm. to a place like Baltimore is nothing nice. Right. And it gave me some kind of foundation. It it was challenging for me. So I'm the type of person if you say go right, I'm gonna go left. Or if it says stop, I'm gonna go. Why do I have to stop? I'm gonna I wanna keep going. Right. So it just gave me something to focus on. And because um it was something I it became a passion. I was able to use boxing as credits to graduate school early. Mm. So I was a so how how did that? Well, the gym I went to had like an educational component. Okay, and then I went to a. I went to a bay. I got kicked out of Douglas. I'm going to be 100 with you. Okay. I got kicked out of Douglas for fighting, <laughs> okay. and they sent me to a bad school. A Little level... did they know you were starting a legacy. Yeah, they, they sent me to a level five school, and I've always been academically gifted. I went to magnet schools when I was younger. Okay. So they saw like, hey, she's smart, but this is a distraction. Right, she needs some guidance. Yeah, so mm-hmm. they was like, okay, boxing, she's committed to this. And they get, how are we going to do this? So they worked it out for me. Very smart. Yeah, and my mom, she was like, well, you can't box until you graduate. So I end up graduating at 16. Wow. Yeah. Just so, so you could get in the ring. Yeah, and, and by, six, well, I had two proms. But, like, by 17, I was a national champion on Team USA. And I reigned for a long time. I'm a 12-year Team USA alumni. Wow. So you would think at 17, you have all this going on. Mm -hmm. You have a passion that you found. So you would think you would pretty much be laser focused on this. But somewhere in the midst of all that, you end up on American Idol. This was before. So was American Idol first? No. Okay. (laughs) All right. All right. I became a national champ at like 17. Okay. But I was still, I just started boxing. It was so funny. They thought of such a unique combination that they sent an American Idol van to my gym. The first one crashed, and then they sent another one to videotape me. Like, they just thought it was so cool. To get your story. Yeah, Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, um, you know, 
when I went on American Idol, this is when they took like super young people. And they didn't say I was horrible. They didn't say I was bad. It was basically, you, you need to develop. But Simon Cowell from the UK was like, well, you can't be good at everything. And then I told him when I left, like, if I'm not the American Idol, I'm going to be the middleweight champion of the world. You did and say I, that. I, and I hadn't even fought in a national tournament yet. Yes. You, know? <laughs> you did say that. I have the quote. Simon's yeah. and yours. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it came to pass. You can't be good at everything. You know what I mean? Yes, and I, you're a good boxer. Thank you, y'all. Thank okay, you so thank, you. thank you. Nice to meet you. Keep working on it. I told y'all if I don't beat America, I don't be the next middleweight champion of the world. <laughs> yeah! 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 I'm super middleweight, and I could still be middleweight, you know, but I, I be amazing myself, man. And now since then, just the titles that you've accumulated and um, just going back to your amateur career, yeah. um, that feeling going into uh, the Pan American Games, yeah. because that was like your first. That was the first time in history for women to be included. Um, it was crazy like to see women headlining in different countries mm -hmm. like Madison Square Garden and now AO Arena, O2 Arena. Um, when I started, women, the women's boxing none of this was happening women's boxing wasn't even in the olympics right so like my journey contributed to that because my weight class was in the olympics due mm -hmm. to like how do you i represented the united states we were performing well you got girls from china performing well uk so it was like wow now i look back and you bring it up i'm like yeah i yeah. never had any idea what happened it just happened and i just stuck with it and and this all introducing you to um, you had the AIBA's the championship in China. Yeah, Aiba. I mm -hmm. went there uh, and and won my first uh, world medal, silver. Was this your first time being overseas? No, no, no. I had uh, I've been traveling. I became um, a national champion. My first my first country I visited was Russia. Okay. And I only had nine fights, and I'm fighting grown, grown women with much experience. I think I was actually fighting a dude. I'm going to be a <laughs> You weren't sure? <laughs> yeah, because I'm tough and I'm strong, but she was, like, trying to manhandle me. But once I went there and I didn't get the decision, I went undefeated for, like, five years. Mm-hmm. And I uh, went there, and I've traveled South America, Canada multiple times, and then I went to Russia a few times, China, and yeah, crazy. And you're so comfortable with it now, and you say, you know, I feel like I can fit in anywhere, wherever I go. Yeah. What, were you feeling like that your first time on the plane, being from VA, being from Bmore? Were you going with that same gusto? Were yeah. you a little intimidated? How are you feeling? I, I end up getting a nickname, Ambassador, because I love people. And sports and music is universal, and I mm -hmm. think that's what I was born for, to to uh, spread love and just connect with people. Because mm -hmm. I think, especially with technology and things that's going on, we get so disconnected yeah. that we're human. We're supposed to communicate with animals and, you know, the trees and stuff. But I became the ambassador, and everywhere I went, people didn't even speak English, wanted me to sing. You know, I actually went, when I went to China, South Korea gave me a gift, and you know, like those Korean countries, they're not supposed to speak to other countries, because mm. I think it's communist, don't quote me, but like the either North or South Korea, they don't speak to other countries, mm. and they gave me a gift, and I'm like, whoa, what is this, what is this, so yeah, I, I, just, I just get in where I fit in. Yeah, <laughs> wow, and so you have this in incredible career just as a teenager alone and as an amateur, and then you start your professional career. Yeah. And you have your professional debut. Um, you mentioned uh, Clarissa Shields earlier. Yeah. Um, so now you had that fight, right? Yeah. That was a loss, right? It was random. Yeah. It was. <laughs> it was yeah. And so now you you're coming off this incredible high of a career, and now you have this loss, and you're like, okay, this is my first like you know professional bout, and now I have this loss. What's the mindset after that? Well, you know what? I I was I was. Taking one for the team, honestly. Okay. Because I had a two and a half week notice. Mm. I actually this was 2016. I actually was going to prepare for the 2020 Olympics because I was an alternate for 2012 and 2016. Okay. And when I have my mind set on something, I want to do it. Right. And alternate twice in a row. You're like, we we got to yeah, get it this I time. I was an alternate at 165, and then I moved up to 178, and I medaled twice in the world. So I know I'm one of the best in the world. Come on. And I went heavier. <laughs> so uh, she had 13 girls turned her down. 
Mm. And me and her been on a team, Team USA, for a long time. Wow. So it's like, I was like, and my mindset honestly was like, if I don't take this fight, one, one, it's kind of messed up. She just won another gold medal and nobody want to fight her. How dare you think you're the best if you don't even want to fight with the best? Yeah. So I got two and a half weeks. My coach, my husband, they really wasn't feeling it, but I told them, just get me ready as best as I can. Mm -hmm. The opportunity was great. This is women's boxing on Andre Ward, who has a Showtime documentary on his undercard, mm -hmm. Las Vegas, T-Mobile Arena was brand new. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I think I got the goods. I just need a stage to show it. And I told the guy, I said, I know if I don't knock her out, I'm not going to get the decision. So I knew what what it was. I just had to do the best I could. Right. And um, it... it it made a way for me. Yeah. Other people took it, they would take it as a loss, but who else has that person fought that became undisputed? We both undisputed right now. Mm -hmm. So it just is a testament to my character, my ability, my mindset, and really how I'm built. So um, you didn't want to take that as a knockback. So what happens after that? I actually, <laughs> once again, forced into the position. You know, I told the guy I'm not a, a, an opponent. I'm just doing this because... This is the right thing to do. And I told him, I need a career after this. So I never managed my in my life. I was helping my husband with his career. Mm -hmm. But this is just the hustle in me. I need you to invest in my next fight. So I had got, you know, after I fought, I took that extra money I made, and I promoted my own fight. Found my opponent, got on the card, did what I had to do. Won that fight, did the next one. And then I just started moving myself. I've been self Was that the Cornell fight? No, no, no. Okay. This was a couple of them. Then I got called for the Cornell fight. Okay. And I said, okay, let's do it. Okay. I had a bum shoulder and everything, and we just took it. Went out to Vegas. I said, let me try my luck. And won. Yeah. yeah. With a bum shoulder. Yeah. That's not easy. Listen, I've had a shoulder. I've had a frozen shoulder. Okay, that will take you all the way out. Yeah. <laughs> you don't realize how much you need your shoulder until yeah. you don't have your yep. shoulder, right? Yep, yep. So to win a bout. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so you won that fight, so now there's a momentum here. And eventually you have the opportunity with Golden Boy. How did that come about, Golden Boy uh, uh, promotions? Yeah, shout out to my OG, Bernard Hopkins, who's a, a, a great mentor in my life. I just spoke to him on Father's Day. Okay. Um, you know, when you sit down for these fights, they do fighter meetings, and they talk to you, basically trying to get a feel for you. Mm -hmm. And he was just so enthralled in, in, like, my whole aura. And everything I told him I was going to do, I did, basically. Yeah. And his his journey, my journey is parallel. He lost his first fight. He managed himself for a majority of his career. So he just saw himself in me. Mm -hmm. And then he he's like, come up to Philly, you and your husband. I want to meet with you. So we met, like, in February of the next year. And then, like, April... I think, I don't know, April, whatever my next fight was, he had got me signed mm -hmm. with Golden Boy. All right. So, um, you know, you have the fight coming up in London. Um, you've had just quite a few fights. Even um, the fight that you had with Jimenez that, that was kind of scandalous just because <laughs> she had the whole issue where... Testosterone. There was a win, but then, of course, she failed the drug test. And, and I, the, knew, I knew she would fail it. I knew. Really? Knew, yeah. But you weren't verbal about that before the fight. I, you know, you know, you can't say certain things without, I didn't want to sound malicious, but it was the elephant in the room. Okay. And I'm not stupid and everybody else plays stupid, but I knew what was up and they put me in a position that if I didn't fight her, they were going to take my belts and nobody's taking anything from me. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> you know, right. so I had to do what I had to do. Okay, so the testing came about, was it kind of a standard thing or did it come about because there was some speculation that something might I be going on here? It. I fought At this time, I still was managing myself, so I'm going against my promoter. Not going against them, but I had this fight for myself with them. Against the advice of? Is when no, just okay. like demanding it. Yeah. Because you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, being a woman, especially a woman, woman of color, sometimes people don't want to listen. It's just like, you should be happy you got this opportunity. I'm like, you know what? I hear you, but I'm not fighting without drug testing. I'm not fighting without this, that, and the third. So mm -hmm. they were gracious. We got it. It was three tests. She failed one of them and passed the other two. And, we, you know, I knew it. I knew it. I just wow. knew it. <laughs> and so... They ended up stripping her 
yes. of her titles. Yes. You are uh, currently undisputed, um, of course. But uh, Ellen C. Uderos, you had that fight as well. Um, how was she as a contender? Oh, I mean, she was a hard, uh, trained, uh, very determined mm-hmm. woman. She could. She had boxing experience, but she was also a, a representative of her country on a national soccer league. Mm-hmm. So she's uh, she's a workaholic. And she had just come off a good win where she took the other girl's belt, dropped her and everything, and came from Sweden to the States to do it. So her confidence was really high. Um, We were supposed to fight on one platform, but it kind of got messed up. Mm -hmm. So it gave like a whole extra year to train. So she was in top shape. I was ready, but I dominated her. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I would have took my foot off the gas, she definitely would have tried her hand. It wasn't a walk in the park because... She's a great a great competitor. Yeah. But I know how I'm built. Right. Okay. <laughs> and now the fight uh, that you have coming up on July 1st against Savannah Marshall. Um, of course, um, the DMV Baltimore, excited for that. Um, boxing has such a huge fan base in this area. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore, Washington, D.C. I mean, I remember years ago doing radio and uh, the, these huge companies, they would drop these huge contracts to, to have radio people fly out and do the fights just because, and it wasn't just because our shows are so great, yeah. but it was because... The pay-per-view numbers were there. The mm-hmm. numbers were there. Like, the fan base is just so serious yeah. in this area. Yeah. I feel like, I think, you know, shout out to Tina Turtle, rest her soul. I feel like I'm more in that type of lane because, yes, we have a great fan base. And, unfortunately, I haven't been supported like that here. For mm-hmm. my, I'm, I'm probably the most accomplished boxer from Baltimore. You know, shout out to Tank. You know, he's done his thing. He's doing his thing. But when you talk about accolades, now I ain't doing no pay-per-view numbers yet, but if you talk about accolades, and I was prior to him, I've done everything except go to the Olympics. And it's not celebrated like that, which is fine. Like, I'm not going to beg people to like me or love me. But when I went over to the U.K., it kind of hit different. When I go down to Mexico, it kind of hits different. Absolutely. And I'm just like, okay. But it doesn't deter me. It doesn't deter me whether people want to support me. That's on them. But I'm doing what I do so people coming behind me will see, like, you have something to reach for. Yeah. Just like Serena needed Venus to reach for. Yeah. I reach up to them because I'm like, dang, these girls did it their own way. So I'm just in my own space, and I'm just happy. If people shout me out and love me, I accept it, and I'm happy. I just do my own thing. Yeah, and that's why, look, I know that you are on heavy heavy press tours all over the world. And that's why I'm glad that you accepted the invitation to come here today. Because um, one of the purposes of this show, To Be More, is to highlight and uncover the hidden gems in Baltimore. You know what I mean? So you're out there, you're doing your thing on a world stage. Historic, Historic. I'm the first ever super middleweight, undisputed female champion in history. Yes. I'm the lineal champ. Basically, I'm the man. So when I'm gone 15 years from now and they trace that lineal belt back, it goes back to me. I've been the first ever female to compete in the Pan American Games. Mm -hmm. I've done so many firsts in history, not just in Baltimore, not the DMV, the world. Yes. But sometimes people don't celebrate you till you're gone. So that's why I just keep working. They'll catch up. I've always been like that, offbeat. And I've seen things, things I'm people doing now, I was already doing it or thinking about it back then. So people catch up. I'm just doing my thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good attitude to have because that helps you uh, keep the momentum. Yeah. And honestly, um, you know, there is so much love out there, and yeah. you wouldn't even know it. Yeah. And sometimes people just want to be aware so they can support you. Yeah, you know what and, I mean? and I thank you for having me. And that's what I, that's one thing I, my husband always tells me, like, people don't know. Some mm-hmm. people don't know. Mm-hmm. So I just, like, trust me, I used to be in the schools all the time. I put in work. Yeah. And I just do it. And what's for meant for me is always going to be for me. Yeah. Once I go over here to uh, Manchester and dominate Savannah Marshall and remain the undisputed champion of the world, I'm going to come back to Baltimore. Okay. I know down the line I'll have a parade. I'll have a day after me. I'll have a whole bunch of stuff. But I just continue to work until those things manifest.
you know, I feel like I'm being drawn into some type of history right here because this isn't the first time that you've been on television or in an interview and you've stated something and it's come to pass, right? So yeah, I'm in my Kanye West era. I'm telling you. I'm not putting it past you at all. Listen, a- look, this, this station was the first news outlet to show me love. And you want to hear that story? Yes, please. Rand, I'm telling you, my life is so random. So <laughs> Kristen Schaefer, he used to be here. He was on my block covering like some chemical fire or chemical spill. The house is down the street. Okay. And I'm going to the gym. I'm looking bummy. Like I got my sweat clothes on. He probably thought I was a mad woman. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I got a story. I got to tell you, just trust me. I'm on my bike. So I'm like, please, just, just you know, let's exchange information. He was like, okay. So he took it. And when I when he found out I was going for the Olympic Games and he just really supported my career wow. even up into the Olympic trials. This is when I didn't make it, but he supported and uh he always showed me love, even when I became a world champion. But, you know, I, I all I need is one person to believe and I'm gonna do it. Yeah, you know, WMAR <laughs> known for doing some firsts. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah, for I, sure. I'm not surprised. So that's why we're so glad to have you here. Um, just to have more of that hometown support behind you as you head to Manchester uh, to take on Savannah Marshall yes. July 1st, yes. AO Arena. Um, it's going to be an exciting time, an exciting fight, and um, the bout is on the line. Currently, the undisputed super middleweight world boxing champion sitting yeah. right here. You have a title to defend, and uh, we just want you to know that we're proud of you. Thank you. And we want to know what else that you have on the horizon. What What is on the horizon for the HH, the heavy hitting diva? You know, I'm co-promoting this show, first time in history. Okay. Um. It should be on Sky Sports, and I think it's going to be on ESPN, a, okay. a new a ESPN outlet. But the week I get there, the 26th, uh, just check back with me. I'm doing something crazy that's ha- that hasn't been done, and I'm fulfilling my dream. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it's, yeah, I'm going to take everybody to my secret place. Whoa, this... Glenn, why are y'all doing me like this? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take you to my secret place. Just stay tuned. That's all we get. That's all we get. Well, if folks want to learn more about the HH Diva, Franchon Cruz Desern, what's the best way, how to log on, where to reach you on social media? Well, you can follow me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at the HH Diva. That's T H E H H D I V A. I'm on Facebook. I'm a little crazy, but. It's just a little bit of what I do. Okay. All right. And if folks want to uh, check out the fight, I know there are a few folks that are actually taking the flight and heading out to the fight. But folks back on the home base, are are there ways we can tune in? Yes. You can go to Sky Boxing Network, and I'm working on having it on an ESPN platform. Okay. Um, I'll announce that via my social media or boxer.com, B-O-X-X-E-R.com. We'll have more information, and I'm probably going to go back into hiding until fight now. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I mean, listen, it's deserved, and I'm, I'm glad that you took a few moments out of your uh, busy schedule Straight training. Straight from the gym. Straight from the gym. Preparation. <laughs> I know it to come with us, um, and you're going to be heading over to Manchester soon, so we just wish you the best. Uh, Franchon Cruz deserved the current undisputed super middleweight world boxing champion. Uh, make sure you check in July 1st, and we'll be sure to support Make sure you log on and support her as well. If you miss any episodes of the Two Be More podcast, just make sure you log on WMER2news.com. I'm Erica Kane. Thanks for checking in.